and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to take you a little bit further with Google Forms. Now, one of my favorite things to do with Google Forms is to create multiple tests. So multiple versions. It's a very cool trick. So let's dive in. Okay, so I've opened up a Google Form. I've already uploaded my custom header. And we're going to title it. And then I'm going to put the same title here. And I always like to remind the students to make sure they complete all the questions and press submit. First question is already there. And I'm going to ask for their first name. I like to ask for their first name and last name separately so that I can sort the data either by their first name or their last name depending on what I'm doing. Notice it popped up and switched over to short answer. It recognized it. I do have all these options for how I want them to answer the question, but in this case, short answer is perfect. Come over here, hit the plus. Now I'm going to ask for their last name. Again, it recognizes short answer. Now I'm on this question. If I hit plus again, it's going to give me another question right below this. If I was up here on this one, it's going to put one in between the first name and the last name. So make sure, depending on where you're highlighted, where you're working, that's where you want to hit the plus so it goes right below that. If you mess up, you can drag them and put them in the correct order. So plus, I like to ask them what period they have geometry. So I went ahead and put one through six. Currently, I'm not sure which period I'm going to have conference period, but I'll go ahead and list them all right now because I can always come over here and edit the form and remove whichever period I do not have a geometry class by clicking on one of these X's. I want to make sure this is required. You want to make sure all your questions are required. That way they don't skip anything and forget. So let's go back, make sure these are all required. I missed that. Okay, so I've got my basic information. I'm going to click this slide because then I want one more question in this section. This is our first section. And this next question, I'm going to add another question. I'm going to have them tell me which animal makes the best pet. Then I'm going to give them options. You can put whatever options you would like. I put dog, bird, cat, and fish. Now, make this one required also. Everyone's going to get these basic questions. After these first few questions, now I want to break them up and have them go to different directions for different versions of the test. So depending on how many versions you want to make, you want to make a section for each version. I'm going to do two versions. So I'm going to hit this equal sign once and tap it again. That will give me two sections. So now I have section two and section three. Each section is going to be a separate test. I am going to put a title here and I'm going to remind them again, or you don't have to. And I'm highlighted here, so now I'm going to hit the plus, and that's going to keep me in section two, and I can add my first question. So this is going to be question one. I have already taken a test that I have, that I've used in the classroom that I normally pass out, and I've snipped it out, cropped out the questions, and put it into a Google drawing, and I downloaded it as a PNG file onto my computer. So I'm going to now click that and I'm going to upload it from my computer. So sign of angle A and it goes with this diagram. It's going to be multiple choice and here are going to be my options. For this I've downloaded the Equatio Chrome extension so that'll help me with fractions and writing different math language. So I'm going to click on Equatio and it pops up over here and it will recognize that I'm writing a fraction when I write four slash three. Then I click insert. Option one is four thirds. 
add another option. I'm going to do Equatio again, and I'll keep going and adding all of my multiple choices. I have four. So now I've got my options in here. I can shrink this up a little bit. There we go. And the students can always make it bigger when they get the test if they need to zoom it in a little bit. Now I'm highlighted on this question. I need to add question number two. So click the plus and it will bring me to another question. And notice I, this is question three below me, but I'm still in, sorry, not question three. This is section three below me. I'm still in section two. So this is question two. I'm going to repeat the process that I did for question number one. So there's question two with all the options. And don't forget to keep marking these required so that the students don't skip any of the questions. And I'm going to hit the plus to add another question. Now we're on question three. For question three, I'm going to use Equatio. And notice it keeps putting up multiple choice. It recognizes that this is probably a multiple choice question. And now I can just input my possible solutions, 32. So question four, I inserted the image. And then I'm going to just type the question here. And then come down here and give them the options. It says short answer. I don't want short answer. I want multiple choice. So click here and change it. Okay, so that was question four. Add another question to this section. I have five questions. So this will be the last one for this section. So I inserted the image and I'm going to type my question here. And now I'm going to add my four multiple choice options using Equatio. If I find that I've made a mistake when I entered the answer here, one of the possible answers, I can always press the X and delete it. Make it required. So now I have all five questions that I want for section two. So these are all the questions that I want for section two. If I do not give directions for the computer on this last question, question number five, it will automatically send the students to section three. And I don't want that to happen. So what you do is you go to these three dots and then you want to go to section based on answer. Click on that. Now it gives you these options. So option one, I'm going to submit form. I want every single one of these. I want it to go to submit form. So now that I've got all my questions completed for section two and they're all marked required right here. Oh, missed one required. So once you've done that, then you go on to create your second quiz, your second version. So I'm going to race through that. Okay, so I finished section three. I've entered all the questions. They're slightly different from the first version, which is in section two, but they're very similar. I do not have to change the options here to go to submit because there's nothing after this. The only option is to submit. Okay, so now I've got all my questions done. Now we've got two test versions, one in section two, one in section three. Let's go back up to our question about the dog and the cats. So right here, I want to tell this question, depending on what the students answer, this is how I assure that students all get different versions. Of course, make it required, the three dots go to section based on their answer. So if they answer dog, I want them to get, go to section two, which is your quiz. That's your first quiz we created. If they say bird, again, I'm gonna go to section two. That's the first version of the test we created. These two, I'm gonna send them to section three. Because this is a quiz, I now need to go to the settings wheel, and I wanna mark it as a quiz. And I'm not going to release the score immediately, but you definitely have that option. I'm going to release it manually later. You also have these options here. Save that. Once you mark it as a quiz, now you can go over your questions 
and you can add points. So right here, add your answer key. Make sure this says one point, two points, however many points you want to give for that. And you want to highlight the correct answer. Once you click on that, highlight the correct answer. And you want to do that for every single problem. That way it will automatically grade this for you so you don't have to worry about that. Once your students are done and they've submitted their responses up here at the top, all your responses will be listed here by student. All the way at the bottom of the list, you will see pie charts, or you have the option to create a spreadsheet to see all the data as well. So you're in your quiz. This is, you're the owner of this quiz. If you want to see what it looks like from the student's view, click the eyeball here. This is student view. This is what the students will see. Notice I have Equatio and Equatio shows up as an option for them as well if they have it downloaded on their computer. Notice this is section one. They're going to have to answer all those questions. So depending on which answer they choose here depends on which version of the test they're going to get. To go back to the editing side of Google Forms, you go down here to the pencil and you click on that. You will always have that option if you are the owner of this Google Form, which I'm the owner because I just created it. So if you created it, you're going to have that option. Students will not have that option. So tell me in the comments below, how would you use this option? Do you have other ideas for it? I've thought of the choose your own adventure story, letting kids choose their own adventure, and an easy way to give students different versions of the test. That's another great option. How would you do it? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and that bell so you are notified every single week when I upload new videos helping you with technology. Step out, be uniquely wonderful you.